All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One News. Day one of testing in Bahrain is done and dusted, and we're going to break down everything we learned from today. Red Bull finally unveiling their new car, but Mercedes very confident in their W14. No porpoising to Toto Wolf, no issues that will be performance related. And he reckons that this time last year they knew they were having some issues. This year they feel confident they may well have a championship winning car. Very much enjoy your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Phenomenal photo here of Valtteri Bottas, who actually kind of looks like Lewis Hamilton's teammate again here in the black outfit with a Hamilton checking out and being very careful not to touch the RB19 as it is now. So just some comparisons on how different these cars look across the grid. This is the Mercedes versus the Ferrari. You can see from this kind of side-by-side -side approach, it's remarkable how different these two cars are. The Red Bull as well, a vastly different concept that was finally unveiled. There was a red flag nine minutes into the session for Mr. Felipe Drogovic, right, because his car broke down. I think there was some electrical failure that Aston Martin fixed. Their day ended way better than it started. There were a few issues with Aston Martin, but they may be, well, they could be the most improved team this year. Now, of course, as we mentioned, not everything here in testing is relevant to how fast the cars are going to be, but by the end of the weekend, you always can take some things away from the general pecking order of the cars and also kind of how they look on track. But of course, the key thing is day one. They're just getting laps in, just ensuring the reliability is good. There's no problems with the car, and then we'll actually refine the development over the coming days. So it's always good not to overreact, certainly from day one of testing and certainly from morning one of testing as some people were doing. Now one big piece of news though is that apparently Lance Stroll has broken both of his wrists. Now this is unconfirmed, but he was spotted coming out of a hospital with a cast on. So the rumour has it he's broken at least one of his wrists and that would be him out surely for at least a month, you would, you would think at the very least, which would mean he's certainly missing race one in Bahrain next weekend and potentially missing Jeddah and maybe even Melbourne as well. So we'll see on that one, but apparently the Lance Stroll injury might be worse than was initially discussed at the time. Let's talk the RB19 then. So here it is, finally, because we saw the livery only, which is the same as always, back in that stupid reveal they did a couple of weeks ago now. But this is actually the RB19. Few interesting things I wanted to mention here. Of course, the car fundamentally looks pretty much the same as last year, but the side pod design has an even more significant undercut than last year. This is honestly pretty radical. It's the deepest undercut that any team on the grid has gone for to create like a vacuum effect underneath the side pod. We'll see how it works in a second here with the flow viz. I actually think the car almost looks better with this green. I guess it's kind of ugly, but this is the flow viz paint. If you guys are unfamiliar, they put this paint on the car and it dries as the car's moving. So you get to see how the aero is working on the car with the way the paint flows and dries and all this type of stuff. You guys can see a great angle of it here. I believe this was Albert Fabrega's picture, but look how this works. So on the top of the floor here, underneath the side pod, you've got the air coming down this way in the flow this paint has dried along and then up and like um, an under kind of this uh, side pod section here. Pretty interesting. Kind of shows there's almost like a, a low pressure area vacuum. I'm not gonna, you know, my brain is basically a monkey brain for aerodynamics, but whatever. I just look at the like look at the lines. It looks pretty cool. So anyway, this is what's going on here on the Flovis paint. So basically this is what the Red Bull looks like. It is different to last year in some elements. To me, it kind of looks like they just took last year's RB18 and put it on steroids a bit. They pack a bunch of it a bit. It looks kind of similar, but it's well, a bit more aggressive in certain areas and is going to be very fast. There's no doubt about it. These are some of the elements here of the floor. They were the fastest car on the day in the hands of Max Verstappen and a fair part of that might be just because their car is so much lighter this year. Apparently this time last year, the RB18 was 20 kgs over the weight limit of 798 kilograms. This time it's right on the weight limit. So that will help them an awful lot. Of course, other teams also have that in their favor, but the Red Bull does just seem to be last year's car, but better. They were even mentioning that their development has gone incredibly smoothly. I believe there was even a comment that it's almost frightening as how good their development has gone and to how confident they are with this year's car. But of course, last year, yes, the RB19 might be the fastest car at the start of the season. We would expect that. They were the fastest car on track today. Their car didn't get the most pole positions last year. Ferrari did. So other concepts are viable. Other concepts might even be better. Mercedes and Ferrari must think their concepts are better. So we'll see if it worked to Red Bull this season as effectively it did last year, but I'm certainly hoping we get a more competitive competitive season. Speaking of Ferrari, there was quite an interesting thing noticed on Carlos Sainz's car at the start of the day. There was a dimple appearing right at the front of the nose. It seemed like this was uh, some issue with the panel. People thought initially this was like an intended feature that somehow this dimple would like, maximize performance in a straight line, I don't know, at high speeds. Obviously this wasn't intentional and Ferrari quickly confirmed, yeah, we didn't mean it to do that. We then fixed it. But such are the fun things that happen on day one of testing. So this was the results of the morning session. 
session, Verstappen, Sainz, Albon, P3, Joe, Russell, etc, etc, for the rest of the drivers that got their chance to drive. And then in the middle of the day, we got a bit of a press conference with Mr. Toto Wolff and Christian Order. Obviously, you know, great friends, as you guys can tell by this picture, discussing various things during that kind of midday break. So Russell had put in about 60, I think he put in 69 laps. Hamilton later in the day did 83 laps. So the afternoon session a bit longer. Verstappen pumped in a crazy amount of laps individually. We'll see here in a second. But obviously, everyone was looking at the W14 and thinking, OK, is it bouncing? What's going on? There was even some talk of the Ferrari bouncing up and down a little bit on the straight or certainly through the corners. The question is, is that because of the porpoising phenomenon? Is the car not designed optimally or is there actually just bumps on the track? And there certainly is bumps on the track in Bahrain towards the end of the straight. That is very clear. You can see the car hitting the floor quite often there. Also in turn 12, it's the same thing. But Toto Wolff commented on this and said, look, there's minimal bouncing on the W14. There might be some a little on display at turn 12, but it's not performance limiting. And I think we saw this at times with Ferrari last year. You guys remember in Melbourne at the start of last season, the Ferrari was bouncing up and out all over down that kind of curvy back straight, but they were still the fastest car on the track. So sometimes the porpoising affects you badly. Sometimes it doesn't. And a little bouncing is probably not the end of the world if it is not performance limiting, especially if it's to a degree circuit specific. As Toto Wolff goes on to say, a bit of movement in the car in turn 12, but nothing anywhere close to the degree we had last year, not performance limiting. It's not at all as it was one year ago with the car bouncing like a kangaroo. Today we have on part of the track at turn one and turn 12, a little bit more bumpy on the track as it was before, but that's a different issue, not the issue with the car and the porpoising phenomenon they had before. He went on to say this, you need to provide a good car for a driver that has the ambition to win races and championships and we have that. We want to win at this stage last year. We knew we were in trouble because the car was bouncing around. We were not able to drive it correctly, but today it is very different. The car seems to be balanced in the right way. There is no bouncing, which is good news. It's a good starting point. We had a productive morning. The full commentary kind of goes on here discussing the data they were able to collect, certainly last year, but also this year. That you know, This morning, as he says, was a productive morning for them. Haven't seen any bouncing. Solid base now optimized the car, which we haven't done yet. To saying that today was merely about ensuring that it was working as intended. Last year, it was quite clear that Mercedes brought the W13 with the hide pods or the zero pods or the no pods, whatever to the track expecting it to have a massive performance gain. That didn't happen. They stumbled across the massive porpoising issue at the start of testing last year and that was only the start of all the issues for their car that would come over the coming months that they had to resolve. So this year the intention was here in testing, is it going to work and let's just see, go out there, do 150 laps as they've done to test and obviously do some longer runs on the mediums on the hard tyres, whatever, just to see how it's going to fare over time in those long run settings, differing fuel loads and of course that's one of the reasons why it's tough to tell between teams because some teams are running higher aero, some teams are running lower aero. So there's all sorts of different phenomena and effects. And many different teams are in different parts of their program. So some teams will be more aggressive at the start of the sessions to try and get things ready to go and actually prepare the setup and everything. Some teams like Mercedes are like, look, we're just going to sit here and see if the car works properly for the first 150 laps on day one. And then day two, day three, we'll start to optimize, change things. And he makes it very clear they haven't even optimized the car yet. So there's certainly more to come from Mercedes in terms of handling and performance and other factors like that, that they're dialing in. And of course, for stepping in the Red Bull, he had 150 or so laps, so he would have been more comfortable in the afternoon session than Hamilton would have been getting straight into the W14 for the first time in a situation like this. So definitely intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think about the words from Toto Wolff there? But he seems rather confident, right? He said last year they already kind of knew they weren't going to win the championship because their car was malfunctioning on day one, but this year, very different story. So he reckons they win with a shout at the very least, and we'll see how that goes over the coming days and weeks. Now, Aston Martin, of course, are potentially, even Adrian Newey mentions, could be in the fight with the top guys. Certainly, there's expectations that Aston Martin might be able to separate themselves from the midfield. They somehow managed to break Alonso's floor during pit stop practice. Finally, they got it fixed, though, and he was able to get out on track, and he put in a time in testing on the medium tyres that was faster than Stroll's qualifying lap from last year. So today, the fastest time was about a 120, a 130 sorry, 8, 132.8. Last year's fastest time on day one of testing was a 133.9. We'll see in a second. So the cars are certainly faster already than they were last year. That's not a massive surprise. But the fact that the Aston Martin is already faster than it was in qualifying last year on day one of testing is, um, you know, quite the thing to see as well. So these were the overall numbers. Verstappen was fastest to 132.8. Alonso also pumped in a 132.8 right at the end of the session. Then Sainz, then Leclerc, then Norris, then Hamilton, 
and then etc etc and uh, honestly pretty well stacked here and you can see that there's a uh, well how many different cars one two three four five like there's seven or eight different cars that went faster than last year's fastest time on day one that was actually the Alpha Tauri. so just to compare to last year's and this is why don't read too much into day one of testing right because last year Gasly was fastest with a 133.9 then it was uh, Science Leclerc Stroll was P4 then Albon right so and in fairness last year was the very first day of testing on these brand new cars so you know it's expected that it's going to be a bit more muddled maybe than this year but just to say that what we saw last year was certainly not indicative of what actually happened in the season so don't read too much into day one by the end of the weekends I think the pecking order might be a little bit clearer but for now we're just going to have to take everything with a bit of a grain of salt the key thing for many of the teams today is laps put in as many laps as possible Verstappen did everything for the Red Bull today 157 laps with Verstappen on his own that's like three Grand Prix distances in a day remarkable stuff but um, I think we're going to see more of it over the weekend from other drivers Mercedes is 152 across Russell and Hamilton Williams 149 Alfa Romeo 138 bit of some difficulties of course for Aston Martin and also for McLaren they had some problems they had to solve still got in almost 100 though so not too bad and two more days of testing very much still to go so if everyone's intrigued your thoughts in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed don't forget to subscribe if you're new we're almost at 16,000 love to see it take care and I'll see you next time